The Chargers got demolished and Justin Herbert is injured again. And this was the worst possible outcome that I could have ever predicted in this game. And like always, we're going to go over the positives and the negatives of this game. Also, tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I'm going to be live on the Bleacher Report app to go over everything and talk about the next steps for the Chargers. That's going to be really interesting to talk about. But like always, man, make sure to like and subscribe. If you do enjoy this content, it helps me out so much. And let's get into this offense on a positive note quentin johnston man he looked nice on that screen pass that he caught in the first quarter he made a couple guys miss and then he went like totally missing in action until halfway through the fourth quarter and he had a huge 58 yarder and then caught a slant for a first down right after that for another first he looked pretty good, man. Last week was his best game, and I urged them to keep feeding him, and he made the most of his targets that he got today. Gerald Everett is also, he has been the most consistent part of this offense, dude. He seems to always be catching the ball, making guys miss after the catch, and he's not a great blocker, but he's probably the best out of all of the tight ends that we have, which is not saying a ton, but Austin Eckler too. He finally looked like the Austin Eckler that we have seen in these previous years, man. He was running the ball pretty well, but his best ability is making guys miss and catching the ball. He was really effective there at times today, and his receiving ability shine. Now, Justin Herbert. Before he went out of this game, he missed several throws, man. That's when he was healthy, okay? He missed Keenan Allen wide open off of play action on his very first throw. And then after the turnover, he gets the ball at the 13-yard line. And he misses both Quinton Johnston and Gerald Everett for touchdowns. I love Justin Herbert. And he has been awesome throughout his career. But... He misses throws sometimes, and there have been a few games where he just isn't right, and this was one of those games. Now, obviously, he got just about no help from the offensive line because he was sacked three times on only his 17 attempts before he went out, and he was under pressure almost every time he threw the ball, but the running backs weren't able to pick up blitzes and give Justin Herbert any time either, which is a major reason that Vance Joseph kept calling those A-gap blitzes. They kept freaking working. People were telling me that the problem was Corey Lindsley not being out there to call out the protection and guys blitzing, but I think that that responsibility should fall on Justin Herbert as well. He is the quarterback. I mean, let's just face it. If he were able to identify these blitzes pre-snap, then he wouldn't be under pressure as much. I mean, think about how often we see a man coming in Justin Herbert's face who was completely unblocked. The person who is supposed to read and diagnose the defense pre-snap is the quarterback and the center. Although I will acknowledge that losing Corey Lindsley did hurt. That much is obvious. But if Corey Lindsley caused this huge disaster on offense, then you're basically saying that he was more important to this offense than Justin Herbert is, which I think we can all agree is not the case. There were times where he could throw the ball cleanly and he took advantage of some of those throws, but again, he missed some of them. So that's why I'm not putting this just on the offensive line in the pass protection. Both Justin Herbert and the offensive line did not play well in this game. And when Justin doesn't play perfectly, this offense struggles. And when Justin Herbert struggles, this offense can't do anything. And then when Easton Stick came in, nothing really changed outside of that one huge play to Quentin Johnson. That was awesome to see. But... That doesn't necessarily mean that Easton Stick and Justin Herbert are equally as good at the quarterback position. In my opinion, that means that this offense as a unit is just so bad that it really can't get that much worse. Chargers were 0 for 11 on third down, 1 for 5 on fourth down. They only had 93 yards in the first half with Justin Herbert. They actually had more in the second half because of that crazy catch by Quentin Johnston. But this offense has been stagnant. They've not been able to score the ball. And the last time they got a touchdown outside of that one that they just scored today was in the fourth quarter of the Ravens game where they got the ball at about midfield and Justin Herbert had a huge 35-yard run to put them in the red zone. I mean, like I said, this offense basically falls entirely on Herbert's shoulders. And in the second half, the Chargers were actually able to run the ball better than in the first half. And I think that's because Brandon Staley probably told this team, look, Herbert is out. So we got to run the ball 
or else nobody's going to be getting ice cream after the game. But the offense was still stagnant and unable to move the ball well. And on fourth down, they had to waste a timeout because the offense didn't get the play call correctly. That falls on Brandon Saley, but also... I'm going to cut him a little bit of slack there because he's got Easton Stick out there and that messes up communication. But I'm not saying that Brandon Staley has no blame here. I mean, we've seen plenty of times where the offense and the defense doesn't know what is happening and they're just rushing to call a timeout. Because of that, and then a failed challenge, Staley wasted two timeouts in the second half of a must-win game against a divisional opponent. That is as bad as it gets, man. I really hope that Justin Herbert is okay. And if there's any risk of a further injury or aggravating it, then I would honestly just put him on IR for the rest of the season because his health is way more important than any other game that we're going to play for the rest of the year because the Broncos basically just eliminated us from the playoffs in SoFi Stadium, our home stadium. I also want to give a ton of credit to Vance Joseph too, man, in Broncos defense because this is the same defense that gave up 70 freaking points to the Dolphins this year and he has totally turned that unit around. His blitzes are so frequent and they come from everywhere. Alex Singleton and Josie Jewell time them so well and you never know who is coming because he runs multiple different blitzes out of the same look. It was hard to watch this offensive line try to block those guys but I can also appreciate a fun defense like that when I see one. Now let's talk about our defense. There was actually a lot of good here. Khalil Mack was attracting a lot of attention by the Broncos offense, so he wasn't able to get many pressures, but he still got some, and obviously in run defense, he was still a top-tier edge player, man. We all know this already. There's nothing new. Tuli Tui Pelotu looked good today as well. I didn't see him pressure the quarterback much, but he also had the edge well for the most part outside of way late in the game when this game was pretty much already decided and he didn't, you know, give... Russell Wilson, the respect that he deserves on rolling out on that bootleg backside, and then it resulted in that touchdown. He's a rookie. You know, he's going to make mistakes like that. Eric Kendricks and Kenneth Murray both had sacks on blitzes, and that is what I've been wanting to see more of all year. Brandon Staley has been way more aggressive on defense lately, and we can all see what a difference that has made on this defense. It has become the strongest part of this team, while the offense is literally nowhere to be found, but we already have talked about that. Michael Davis had an amazing effort on the first play of the game to just rip the freaking ball away from Marvin Mims and get the interception. Mm, that made me bolt up. I bolted up two times today when Quentin Johnson caught that ball and then when Michael Davis got that interception. Other than that, I was not bolted up for most of the day. He just came downfield so quickly and had great instincts on that play. He basically showed how good that he can be. But the problem is he lets up too many big plays and this game was no different. Usually the weakness of this defense is over the middle and like specifically the linebackers and zone coverage. But today it was actually the safeties with Alohi Gilman and Derwin James both letting up some pretty big plays and missing tackles. A big third and eight. Derwin James had Adam Tra Troutman at the line of scrimmage and he missed the tackle. And then they got a first down on that one. Oh my God. Jerry Judy also got behind Derwin James. For a huge 50 yard touchdown but russell wilson bro he just missed the throw and then later on in that same drive jerry judy got open with alohi gilman trailing in coverage in the back left side of the end zone jerry just didn't get both of his feet down it was a tough catch i'll be honest but the safeties have had issues with communication all year and it was clear to see today that the broncos just missed a few big plays to take advantage of that just like they did last week against the Texans. And speaking of their game last week against the Texans, Cortland Sutton caught another long touchdown pass while being interfered with on the play. This time, the victim was Michael Davis, and he had no safety help. So that was the good and the bad. We've basically been eliminated now by the Broncos. So, you know, shout out to them. They played better than us today. That's just simply what it was. Also, shout out to Antonio Gates and Phillip Rivers being there. LT was there too, man, but they had the whole gang back. And we did this. Justin Herbert only played like a half, so it might have been different if he played in that second half. But again, shout out to the Broncos. It was a great game. No, it wasn't. It was, it was tough to watch.